In Windows 2008, we have a brand new tool for managing the web services. From the Start menu, Administrative Tools, on a server that you've installed IIS on, you'll find the IIS Manager. Now, when you open it up, it's going to look significantly different than what you used in previous versions. Why? Well, Microsoft sort of changed the way that the management actually happens. It's more like that each of the components for your web server are little plugins. Now, this opening page is going to give you sort of an overview, give you the chance to connect to local servers, uh, remote IIS servers, give you online resources, sort of like a dashboard. But just under that here, I have my Win 2008 IIS, which is the name of this server, and we can see all the components that are available at the root of this. What authentication modules I have, what compression capabilities, the default documents, things like that. Now, if you remember during the installation, we did a fairly minimal installation. So if we take a look at something like authentication, we see the only authentication that shows up here is anonymous authentication. Why? Well, we didn't add the little pieces to do the other types of authentication you're likely to encounter. How would we add them? Well, let's go find out. I'm going to go back to server manager now. And I'm going to go under features this time. And if I go under features, we find that we've got two features. We have remote administration tools, and that's part, a subset of that was the web server tools. And we have Windows Process Activation Service. Well, let's go ahead and add some more features. And if we scroll down here, we should have, oh, let's see. We've got .NET Framework features. We've got remote management tools. And that's where we see where the web server tool got added. We see under here, we've got Windows Process Activation Services there. Hmm, but where do we actually find where our management pieces are for IIS? Well, if they're not under here, where do you think they'd be? Okay, well, let's try going back to the role. And if we go back to the role, and we take a look, we see we're a web server. And if we go ahead and click on that, we can see what exactly we have. We see the web service. Ah, down under here, we see the IIS, the role services. So we're not exactly looking at features in all of the pieces. FTP was there as a feature, and SMTP was there as a feature. But the actual various components for our server are actually role services. So when we want them, we just click Add a Role Service. And let's go ahead and add so we can see some changes almost immediately, let's say that we plan on utilizing some authentication mechanisms. We plan on using basic Windows and Digest authentication. Standard, oh, you know what, let's put in IP and domain restrictions as well. Standard ways that we might secure our web server. So we can secure it using a basic authentication now, and the others we added. So we'll click to add, install those. It'll add them into our web server for us and then we'll be able to go and take advantage of them. It doesn't take it very long at all, so that's why I suggest don't install all of these at once when you first set up your server. If you don't need them, you can always add the components you need, and it has minimal uh, impact on the server. Now, is it possible that it's going to disconnect some users while they're connected to the server? It is possible, so you don't do this to your production server. You do this on your development server, determine exactly what you need, and then when your production server is put into place, you, can, you know exactly what you need. And if the programmers are requesting some additional uh, capabilities, well then do that during scheduled downtime on your web server. Okay, so let's go back to IIS. Nothing here. Uh oh, let's go back and let's try authentication again. Hmm, you know what? Let's go ahead and see if we can get a refresh and see if now we have anything more. Not seeing anything yet. Remember, we did just add them. So let's go ahead and close and reopen IIS Manager. And now see if it's able to reread that information. Ah, look at that. Now, they're available, but they're disabled by default on all the websites under this server. So we see basic digest and Windows authentication are there. And when we take a look here, we also now see IPv4 address and domain restrictions. I don't think that was there a few minutes ago either. And this is where we'd go to configure particular allow or deny entries to IPs. Now, we're not actually affecting a single website at this point. We're actually configuring all of this as sort of the defaults for all websites on this server. 
as we drag down deeper in here under sites here's the default website we were working with we see these same icons appear here and what they are is configuration for this website specifically so while we had turned disabled it for all websites up here on our individual website down here we could have changed the authentication to uh, enable it we could set default domains and realms so that way people don't have to put the default domain when they log into it we could enable the basic authentication not usually recommended though unless you're using an SSL connection uh, if you're using a an unencrypted connection you might want to look at one of the other authentication mechanisms but what you're able to do is disable and enable those functions on an individual server or, or individual website basis now what you're looking at here is each of those uh, role services that we add and how exactly we want to configure them. Now on my website, if my website has a folder underneath it, so for example if we make a new, oh we don't want to do it from here, let's go out to the web content, c colon i net pub, here's www root, and let's call this application one. Well, just let me put a one on the end there. Application one. Now back in here, we'll see a folder under here called application one. And components that can be configured on a per folder basis inside a website could also be configured here. For example, if I go to authentication, anonymous authentication here, I can disable it. And I could go ahead and enable basic authentication here. Now if we go to WW root, let's go ahead and copy our index into here. And let's just use this. Let's make a quick change on this. And we'll say uh, my application number one. Can you read me? Now, by default, our web content is allowing anonymous access, but it hasn't necessarily allowed any other access. So let's go test our web page. Let's go to HTTP 127.0.0.0.1. Hello world came up fine, but if we go to application one, it's asking us to log in and we're doing a basic authentication. Now we're not doing this securely, so we want to be very cautious about the accounts we use. And in fact, let's go ahead and uh, build ourselves a quick account. Net user add, and let's add Fred, Fred, uh, let's add Wilma exclamation one. There we go, we just made a user, so let's do Fred and Wilma exclamation one. And Fred was allowed to read that page. Not the most secure password passing back and forth because we did uh, authentication, uh, sorry, we did basic authentication, but we were able to secure that page so just not anybody can open it. They had to be a valid account in our system. Actually, going back to a previous chapter in the course, they had to have a little more than just a valid account on the system they had to appear on this security list. And the user Fred I just built by default wound up as in the users group. So he was given read and execute permissions. I could have specified anybody in the administrators group, anybody in the trusted installer group, the system, or the IIS I users, which is our anonymous user, is a member of that. But we turned off the anonymous authentication. Okay, so we've now secured a basic web page and we've taken a look at how it, that may be a little different than what you're used to on previous versions of IIS, but it's not that much different. You just have to remember that you need to go and add in this role service to add the basic authentication or your other authentication types. And you can control your website pretty easily. Now, I could go ahead and take my digest authentication. Uh-oh, I can't. Digest authentication requires that I be joined to the domain. Digest authentication only works in an Active Directory environment. Windows authentication would work, and I could have gone and enabled this and turned off my basic authentication. Now, the same website would still work, but what we would see is we'll still get a login prompt. 127.001, main website works. Application 1 wants our username and password, and this time Fred, Wilma, and there we go. Now, you'll notice, though, this dialog looks, looks a little different. 
we don't see the option of or the warning telling us that we're doing a basic authentication because it is going to be a secure exchange of the passwords. Now the data transmission after this is not because we're still in an HTTP connection but the basic uh, the communication of the username and password is going to be through a Windows based authentication mechanism of challenge response or higher than that. And we you see we also have the option to remember the password now too. And we log in and we can read the page just fine. Okay, well that gives you a little bit of idea as to how these little components here will work. Now throughout the videos we'll be taking a look at other pieces of this as we go. Uh, I just thought authentication was a good one to start you off with and to throw a little security in there for you too.